Hello everyone, good evening, welcome to this episode, episode number 11 of this series, let's make an Amiga game. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our videos, it's quite important to me, to us, um, for the people that help me, um, that... Uh, we get those likes and we, we get the subscriptions um, because it's a motivation believe it or not uh, that is our motivation um, it's like you know when you're playing a game it's like a challenge getting those higher up <laughs> um, so that is why I am saying that um, as always, also, um, for those that like like us and like to follow us and want more, you can join our um, Patreon channel and our Coffee channel, one of which, whichever you like. Both of them offer the same thing and both give you the same thing. Some people prefer coffee, some people prefer um, Patreon. I have no preference between between them whichever you like they are there it's a bit of a hassle for me to update them both every time but it's it's all right <clears throat> and it's encouraging um to all those that support us um what even the messages that you sent um thank you very much um uh, also if you need any help please come to our discord Please subscribe there. It's the first, uh, let's say, place of contact. Um, if you need anything, I get I give preference to the supporters, but I always and I take pride in this. I always reply to anyone that has that needs my help. Also, please like our Facebook page. Um, as you can see, there's the advert. Uh, ad for this uh, for this for this episode of today um uh, there is this there is the page and there is two groups one is the phase 101 group and one is the commodore dev group both of them are phase 101 then there are other groups but the main official ones are commodore dev and phase 101 uh this one should have should work today yeah um, remember the page if you want to learn to code uh, 68k I have made this page which you can see um, by typing exclamation mark book page oops first let me go click there hey Doxter page and there you go, you get the link to this page um, uh, where there is info related to programming in assembly for the 68,000, of course, for the Amiga. This page is live, okay? I do update it um, constantly. So there's always something that you should check um, what was uh, updated. Um, this uh, we have our own telegram group if you want to join there but most people join uh, discord as i as i said um and this is the design document that i wrote originally for the game i have in i started to include this document with the game with with the sources now so that because it's a live document i am updating it so you will also get this with the sources uh, once this source starts, I mean, because I, as I, as you know, only till episode number six or seven with the debugging are available for now. Uh, the rest will be after I finish this series. I do not see this series long, but yeah. Um, so we are more than halfway through. Um, The rest that I, I need to say, you have the in the upper uh, right-hand corner, 
there are there are all the links so please as always i've said this subscribe to our youtube uh, follow us on uh, like our videos follow us on twitter instagram and here twitch like our facebook page and youtube videos of course and join our discord and or any of the facebook groups that uh, you like so let's go back a bit to the game now um need to switch to visual code there you go so i have included uh, this page in the sources called notes why i'm doing this because every time after after an episode i was taking notes of what need what i need to either keep track of or what i need to change in the next episode or what i need to do so i started this uh, small it's it's not a devlog or something like that it's just what we what we need to do or where we fi where we finished uh, and that will also be in the docs directory as you can see in the docs directory there is also the uh, pdf uh, of the game okay plus anything else that I might be adding, anything related to docs is going there. Um, however, um, another thing that I want to uh, mention is that last time we said uh, we had a, an issue that we needed to, to debug which I'm going to talk about why it is why it is crashing. It is still crashing, but I uh, it is not our fault. You will see why. Before I uh, explain the issues that we have and what where we left, um, as you can see, these are the two that we have from the last episode, and I have included them here in in number eleven. I'm going to explain the uh, the notes I already did. I'm going to explain the direct structure because I enhanced it a bit. Um, source, you know, all the sources are there now. We did this last week. Um, however, the startup file is not anymore in the include file, in the include directory, but in the libs directory or lib directory. The reason why is normally in the include uh, directory you get system files you get the include files of the os and you should not be mixing the include files of the os with your own so i created a uh, lib um, when you create a project we're using the extension it actually downloads some of the extensions there i deleted them because i'm not using them but if you need to use them that's with the place where they should be under the include directory snippets you know um, when i started i had some snippets already that were taken from the book which i uh, include um win uae or uae i have added in the c directory some os commands okay you don't need to do this it's just me it they were handy while I, when i was debugging It's up to you. The GFX directory, you know about it. The doc directory, you know about it. The 64 underscore game is where the game that was written for the Commodore 64 and that we are, um, let's say, um, converting to. So a clone of it. These three, the build bin and visual code, they are by the extension, the first one is by visual code. So these two are used by the extension, okay? So that's the directory structure. So this one, where is it that I added? So the first, add the notes file, I did explain that. Add the design document, I did that. Add the lib directory and the startup.s, I did that. Uh, I explained the, the project uh, directory structure basically. 
Um, then there are these two, which are from episode 10, which is the crash and what Emanuele had asked. I need to um, go um, back a bit and explain something. I might have missed this, so I don't remember if I explained it or not, but I'm going to, to do it. Um, the constants file, I will explain about it. It's coming later on. Uh, the This one, I checked it out. We cannot actually, I had a note to rename the move sprite routine to move player routine, but actually we cannot do that. Uh, I don't know why I, I had a note for that. Um, the move sprite is used by the player and is used by the enemies. So it's the same routine coming to all. This we will fix, rename the sprite X and sprite Y. Uh, we need to write uh, hex to decimal conversion routine. So this is going to be a bit strange. The reason why is I said I'm going to use things till chapter 7. So because um, we haven't till chapter 7 signed and, and unsigned numbers are not explained and also the div and the multiply the um, instructions are not explained so we are going around this problem uh, we will add lives today to the game and we we lose if we lose a, a life we will lose uh, uh, and fix hopefully we have time to fix this sprite respawn okay so let's start uh, first of all with the with the, with this one um 10 zero, 02 the why it was crashing so to be fair it wasn't crashing um what was happening is is that we have a startup file and with the startup file was written for um till workbench 3. Point, or not workbench kickstart 3.1 we should be using anything, either 1.3, 3.1, anything till 3.1. However, the extension uses ARROS. Okay, so there is some incompatibility with that. So when you exit from the game, we will not be exiting from the game. That is something that I did so that we, we can test things out. Um, when you exit from the game, there are some vector interrupts which are set or are, sorry reset which are not um, being set correctly i haven't went deep into trying to figure out which ones but it's some vector interrupt which we don't really we don't really need to worry about and it's it's a it's a lot of time right now to even dedicate time to that so the startup file Taking from the book, we know now that there is some issue with it in relation to uh, Aros, which it's fair. I mean, Aros is not, uh, it's, it's a, let's say, a clone of the Amiga OS or Kickstarts. So yeah, I do not expect it to behave in the same manner. Um, we can, I'm going to run it and you're going to see that it it is fine now. I hope that it is fine. I just, what I did, um, I went into settings for the extension. Okay, so go to extensions, the Amiga assembly extension, and I am using a copy of the extension directory, but with, that uses kickstart 1.3 instead of, um, instead of the um, default one which is arrows there's not no changes so you can do the same thing if you want take a copy of it which is um, normally it's it's in this directory you will see the part in this directory for it take a copy of it and modify it the way you like if you want that's that's all i did and i'm pointing to it now all i did is change the kickstart nothing else so if i run it given that i am yeah in not some other mode
So now when it exits, you see I have kickstart 1.3, it's so obvious now. It's going to be obvious, you see, we have kickstart 1.3. Um, there are till episode number six or seven because there's the debug and uh, the arrest will be released uh, when I finish the series and the reason being that I need to give something back to the supporters I felt I need to do something about that so uh, I stop sharing them till with I finish the series so that that is ignore that we have an error one to one that uh, has nothing to do uh, but that that is the issue uh, <coughs> that we had before so all the code was correct okay so i as you see i didn't change anything i just renamed this to game over basically because i would like to have a game over screen but nothing else uh, actually, I did something else, but this is more of a precaution. So, the startup file calls start. The first thing I did is save everything that the startup file uses in the registers, I mean. And then I restore them back. Okay. Uh, I did that just to be safe um, more than anything else. Of course, if we have a bug in our program, it will reflect that, <laughs> that. but we should be fine. <clears throat> so the bug thing is gone. It's, it's not there. Okay. Now this, I had this question from Emanuele. I don't know if he's in the chat. No, he's not. Or at least I do not see him. So he asked uh, this question. we have this source file here and we have we are including them and at the top we have this section directive he said why we need uh, the section directive also in the other files well the answer to that let's get one of the files and go to the top of it the answer to that in a way he is right Okay, um, we do not need the section directive. Okay, we don't. But when we started writing the game, we had one file. So they all, we need to make sure that they are all with the same, that they all belong to the same section. Okay, and that's why I have that there. The other thing is when you are doing your own game, okay, the data files, what we have here, okay, these will not be in the section of, in the code section. It doesn't make sense. Okay. They will be separate. They can be anywhere in the, in the chunk of memory, not with the date, not with the code. Right now they are living with the code because this is how we coded them initially. Okay. But they shouldn't have the, game code uh, section because that's the issue that we have so if we go to uh, data you see it has section game code section it's uh, it doesn't make sense to have that should be uh, any other name and then not code underscore p but data underscore p you c we can name those both sections okay both files okay they should have the same section name let's put it this way so that you you group them together but not because they are not more than 64k but not uh but not um with the code so that's a mistake in a way because of the way we started the game However, because it's a simple game, it, we are not going to exceed 64K for sure. Um, so it's fine.
Well, I have some ideas for next game, but we can we can do. Uh, I mean, if you if you want me or you want to do it, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I'm open for suggestions also, as long as people can learn and the game is not a complex one because if it's, uh, it, your your game is not. But what I you know what I mean. Um, if it's a complex one, it it will be it it. They will be it will be hard for them <clears throat> the aim of this series is to um people learn and i i'm introducing bit by bit for example in this game there are no bobs um i want a game with bobs don't get me wrong but for now it is <laughs> well yeah well you know um i'm i'm just saying uh but yeah, eventually I want a game with bobs uh, that have bobs on the screen, but because the book did cover that uh, now, um, but we are trying to limit the damage of the knowledge, let's say, because having to know everything in one go, it's, it's tough. And look at me, eh? the book, it's been nearly, it's one year. Uh, 10 months I think that I've been streaming the book so or eight months or nine something like that so it's tough <clears throat> anyway so this should answer the question of Emanuele um, what else we had and it's also good to track for me okay um, the keep track of what I what I need to do because I was losing track I have to say also so next so I believe these are all done now Still here yeah okay the constant directory so uh, file so we have a constant file okay uh, but these are all constants related to the um, game. I like to keep separate the constants related to the hardware. Okay, so we will do another thing. Normally, okay, before I do what I was going to do, you will have the hardware.i, the include file for the hardware in assemb for the assembler in this directory. Because our game is simple, we do not need the hardware.i, okay? But normally, this is where you you have that, which is provided by the um, include files of the OS, okay? Now, some people do modify that file and have their own version, okay? Um, in our case, we will have, what, two, three uh, things that are related to the hardware. So I'm just going to create a separate file just for... Um, demonstration or um, let's say purposes you know just to just to be neat just to be organized more than anything else so new file and i'm going to say hardware constants i'm not going to call it dot i because it's a source in this case not an include file and i'm calling calling it dot s okay and in this file I will copy uh, this part, okay, so that, and this should be um, system constants, and we have, so far one or two, I can't remember, um, and they are on the on the in the game dot game dot s. So we have the CLX dot, which is the collision one. Okay. We have also the joystick, which I will create a and we have also the joystick. So that is player. Yeah, no, I know. 
that is where are we moving the player here no so there this one so joy uh, I forgot what name they use but I'm going to call it not to waste time joy we can re we can change the name to um, the actual name given by the OS. Uh, what what how the sorry what the proper name that is used in the uh, hardware manual basically. But for now it, it does the job, and we change that to. And then we need to include it. So now under constants. Um, another thing that I added, I commented the files. So. And just to be nice, they should be the hardware comes before the game constants, no? Just to be nice or picky, whatever. So it should still assemble. You know, Dokster, you are saying you like to make small games. You know, I like making small games too. Um, I am working on a big one, but small games tend to give me more pleasure in a way because you do it, you know, it's a short period of time while the big ones, they, they take forever. Uh, the one that I've been working on is already uh, 11 months, so. <laughs> anyway, so. Where is my mouse? Okay. <clears throat> so, what we had next in our notes. I can close these. I'm going to keep on the left side, I'm just going to keep the notes and game.s. So we did this 11.5. So this one we said, it, I put a note, we cannot do this, and I explained why. Uh, I need to do this the renaming of sprite X and sprite Y to player X and player Y. So that actually, um, that is in the constants no game constants and i believe we have player x and player y but in the data okay we should have i'm sorry not in the data where we have our variables here <clears throat> var table so you see we are referencing them because these are initializer in they initialize by initializers but we need to rename these to player y and player x And of course, we need to go and change this in the player file. Uh, 
This part is too small. I do not know why they didn't make it. To be able to scroll through them. So let's find control H. So player underscore X and we change it player underscore X. Is it case sensitive? Uh, that is not player, that is sprite. Yeah. Okay. Now we find the UI. And we change to Y. Put capital. Mm. Ah, I think we don't have, we are not using the Y at all. Yeah, I think we are not using that because the player moves only on the X position, no? So Y is not really uh, used. So just to be sure that I didn't make some something wrong, let's say that, not to use other words. Let's run it. It assembled. So far, so good. It does work. Okay, I'm moving it, and the speed is gained, and we crashed. And it ended. Now, in in reality, we will never get to the screen. Okay, but or the sake of um, for us okay so what's next okay so before I go into this we need a few things first we need three variables so let's go to the variable um, think let's click on it it's better Not to be here and click on it yeah so now i can make this more and this bigger <clears throat> so we need three uh, variables which are related to score lives etc so And this will be uh, scores. Now, there's a reason why I am using numbers so far for instead of bars for the energy and all that stuff. It's because we will have a number and then we create a bar according to that number. So simple, simple thing. Um, we need. We're just going to copy from here. First one will be drives. And we initialize this to zero. Actually, we initialize, we initialize it to three. Although we need to write that routine anyway. Uh, score. And that should be zero. Now, score. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm going to do something. Let's make them long for now. Because score needs to be long. But you will see why I'm making them long. 
and this will be high score no I do not need the even directive there okay it's just me being pathetic in a way so we have those but we need initialization routine even though I, I set it to three but when the game restarts okay it needs to reinitialize them so we might as well uh, write it in the utils so this file as i said um, we will need to split it eventually there will be routines that are utilities let's say like um, like checking for the vertical line vertical raster line that's a utility okay <clears throat> but uh, something like uh, this you know for the lives um initialization for the lives etc that is core you know that is part of the core for the game so we can create a file named core basically but anyway for now it will do also, it will be a revision, so we'll do it later. So this will be finish. Because it will not it will not just be for this core, for the lives, for everything basic, for this core, lives, and whatever we will need. So in it um init variables and in right now we only need to do um zero in score and and knives and we need to call this in the game dot s and that should be mm, we can do it in the beginning but eventually it will be part of uh, the loop so I'm just going to do it here for now okay so we should have that routine I'm just going to not going to run it but I, I should assemble it well I have to uh, do this okay so just to make sure I didn't make any errors. Anyway, it started. Okay, fair enough. Now, what we will have is a number every time the score increments or the uh, or the uh, you lose a life. We will have a number in a variable. We either increment it or decrement it. If it's the lives, we are decrementing it. If it's the um, if it's the score, you are uh, incrementing it. Okay. So for that, we will need a routine. Okay, and this is also a util routine. It's not core. Why? Because this routine you can use it in other things. Uh, although the routine is quite crude what we are going to do i have to say i had to sit down and and do this because normally i don't do this uh, in the sense um normally you know how to use the you know what signed numbers are and unsigned are and use the multiply and division of uh, of the 68000 but i'm not going to do that um so 
just to if I go on uh, variables, variables again. So what we need is a way of reading the value that we have here. Remember, the value is in hex that we have here, okay? And convert it into decimal to display it on the screen, okay? We need a way of passing the value that we have here and do that. So we need this routine that I'm mentioning, okay? So let's go to our utils. and start writing this routine. So this is convert from X. As I said, do not judge me on this routine, okay? It's very crude and uh, Ish, but it's simple, or at least I think it is simple. Um, this will need, uh, we will need to pass it the value. So let's say the zero will hold the hex number to convert. And the result of this should be a digit, um, a string, or digits, a series of digits, that are, let's say, how shall I write this? Um, series of digits. As a string, it will do that. We will that we will print to the screen. It will be printed to the screen. But for now, it's in my head. Okay, so it might change what I wrote, what we have there. Um. Also, okay, we need the. Convert X and oh, thanks, uh, Ker, Ker Monster, for the follow. An RTS, we need an RTS there. Yes. yes. <laughs> So, this I'm realizing, I have a note of it, okay? In the variables, we need something else. So, let's go back to the uh, variable section. Okay? We need, uh, shall we do it as a table? No, not at the table. Let's you will see, you will see what I mean. First, let me add let's I'm going to say variables used by the um hex. So, I need a table, okay? I'm not putting it in table sections and you'll see because it has nothing to do with the game, in a way. I need a table of the powers of 10, 
because else how I'm going to um, know in which position the digit, the digit is. So I did this, okay? I did this table. And because remember we have long values also, so to convert a long value, um, the address will be something like 10 digit when you convert it. Um, so we need that's four and another four and then one. So ten in total. Yeah. And then we do the same thing. But we decrement one. So that is when we have nine digits digits. This is when we have eight digits. This is when we have seven digits. Six digits. I hope I'm getting this right. So now four. Three. Sorry, four digits. I said three. Did I do that? So two, two zeros, I mean, and one. The rest will be remain there. So this is. Okay, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, just to check it, that it is correct. So now we should have nine. Because if this is wrong, the numbers will be wrong. Yeah. Okay, we are fine. Okay, so that's the table power of 10. Ignore me. <laughs> I do not need that, but I'm doing it. Uh, we need, because the values, these, okay, they are long values, okay? Because they are long values, that means we can have up to 10 digits, okay? So we need a counter or position, digital position, okay? Digit position or digit position. Let's go to that digit pos. Let's do it work so that I and oops, it's a nine. I mean, this I'm initializing it at nine, but probably we will initialize it in the routine and then here. We need the string, no? We need we need the actual string that we need to to write. So here is the decimal uh, digits that or decimal. Shall we say string? Let's say string. And this will be 
define constant block and we need 10 because that's the biggest number that we can have of them initialized at zero okay so this is when you want to invent a routine when the processor has actually can do this but because we haven't covered it in the book uh, i am going to stick to that and anyway it's good practice i mean it, it's it's learning um so now we go back to we go back to our utils and start actually doing the actual code so we need to uh, we said it was long, right? Let me bring it here just in case. And we said it's long, it's weird. Okay, so move. Move dot word. So you see, I did not need to specify nine there because I'm going to pass it anyway. Come on. This part is just initialization. Okay, so we are passing nine the number of digits or the position where we are in the digit number uh, two digit pause okay we need we need Okay, we need the address where we are going to store the string. So, so LDA. Um, we called it what decimal string. Because they are in the same section, you know, the variables are in the same section where the code is. I can use the PC, so using relative. But if they were not, I, I need to remove the PC because they can be anywhere in memory. But like this, they are relative. And let's say we use 80 euro for that, register 80 euro. We need also um, the address of where digit pause is so that we can work with a register instead of with it so we can use the memory directly if, you, if we want but it is it's better to have it in in, in an address register or maybe not it's but it's all it's uh because if it changes, we might affect what we have there. Um, maybe uh, maybe it's better to have it in an address register. Let's put it this way. And we need also the address. Nobody spotted that. The table, no? The power 10, what I got? Yeah, power 10. So, we initialize the registers, but <clears throat> we still have to do some more 
thing because this number okay we are going to manipulate it so we do not want to modify the zero but we may need to make copies of what we have in the zero because we are we're, we're going to change it and then we will need to read it back again so move the plug the zero comma the one so we made a copy of it <clears throat> now it's uh, it's a simple routine now I mean this this part is very simple now so basically we need a routine that we just subtract from the value that we have in the zero so So we need a counter to initialize a loop. So the tree is our counter in this case now. We have our loop and we subtract okay not long what we have in a2 okay the power of 10 value the first one that we read uh, so the first one remember these are all long values okay they are all four bytes um, we are going to read this and we subtract it from the value that we have and then we make a decision if it's a minus then the number is too big basically so we scrap that okay <laughs> and we know it's at zero so at least this is how I reasoned it I have a piece of paper that I'm looking at, um, but this is how I, I pictured it in my head. So branch on minus, and we have a negative result. So somewhere down here we have so hmm. I have I can see a problem but we can fix it so we need to add quick dot long we 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 are uh, we are missing something but i think i i know how what to do so d3 we add one to it so we did the first digit basically and we know it's it's if it's a one we um, let's say it fit it if it fit it then it fit it once okay how many times that number is going to fit in the number that we have so not to think in millions let's say we had the thousand uh, sorry uh, let's say we had two two realize my reason let's say we had the number 99 okay how many times the number 10 is going to fit in 
uh, in 99 and basically i am in incrementing by one it should fit it should be nine no so every time it it increments okay i add one to the tree and the tree is going to have to tell me okay what how many times that fit it basically it's it's so simple you know what what, what i'm doing <laughs> As I said, the processor has got an instruction that does this, but we haven't covered it. So, and anyway, it's a good exercise. I mean, the 6502 doesn't have multiplication and division, so you do the same thing, basically. So, unless it's a, um, it can be divided by two or four or things like that, then you can use other methods. So, the problem that I'm seeing with this is that I need another copy of the zero because I'm going to use what use that result okay uh, I don't know how to explain it right now let let me write the code and you'll see what I mean so you you are you will get what i mean once i write it i think but yeah we really need another copy So I said, okay, that if it if it fits, we do this, okay, these two, okay. Uh, did I write correctly here? Is that correct? Yeah. So basically, here, okay, when I subtract it let's say it was 99 again okay when i subtracted 10 from it it became uh, 89 no so we i need that value okay that that i have so the 89 that is here i need uh, i need to work on it okay um but the, the thing is i'm overwriting it here I need to have a copy there. Mm. I should maybe initialize it to zero, no? Well, I don't need to initialize it because I'm moving along what I had in D1. Okay, maybe I do not need a copy of it here. Let's do that but i still need the value okay of the subtraction i need a copy of that and that's what we did we have a, a copy here of the one holding the subtraction value And of course, then we loop. Because this is uh, I mean if it doesn't fit we go to the negative result immediately so if it fits we need to see how many times it fits so that's why um, uh, the branch not decrement and branch so let's see if my thinking is right I'm, I'm trying to run it in my head okay 
we if it's 99 we decrement 10 it becomes 89 it fits so we do make a copy of the 89 into the d2 okay and it fit it once and then loop back it becomes 89 minus 10 it becomes 79 it fits so we make another copy of it into the two and we increment it becomes two times and it continues like this till it doesn't fit so we end up with a remainder so now is what we need to do because now we need to convert the result the number that we get in d3 into the ascii value you know so uh, let me get the ascii chart and tell you what i'm what i'm referring to given that i find it i thought i had it open Okay, let's find it. I need one that is that can be seen. Okay. Uh, control plus. So the number zero okay starts at hex thirty. Okay. So, if we get a value, if D3 holds a value of 0, then we need to print in our string the ASCII, okay, this 0. If it's, I don't know, a value of 9, like in, in the case of 99, okay, I need to print the number 9. So, I need to work on the result of D3 now. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. Please tell me if, if it doesn't. So we do an add and that should be yeah. And that value that we got, we got in D3, we need to add 30, no? Because that's where we said the value start. So 30 to D3. So D3 now holds the ASCII value of the digit that we got. By the way, this part you still need to do it, okay? It's only this that there's an instruction for it okay um the, the result you still need to convert it whatever it gives you the cpu so you still need to do this part and we move this we move this value now it's simple and i'm not working on byte because we have a string and we're working on bytes now okay that's why I move byte. D3, we move the three into okay. The uh, what was the register that we gave for the string? It is eight zero, no? Yeah, eight zero. And we can increment to the next position eight zero because now we're going to do the next digit. Okay. However, we now need, so let's say it was 99 again, okay? Um, actually, let's make it uh, 199, okay? So 100 fits, 
But when we decrease, dec decrement another 100, okay, we find that it doesn't fit. So we come here and we print one into our string. That's fine. Now, what was the value that we had? You, you see where I'm coming. So one, 199 minus 100 gives us 99. So we need to work with 99 now. So we need to move, okay? What? What we had? We need to move. We kept a copy of it in D2. Okay. So the last D2 holds the value that D2 um, holds the value uh, after we have uh, finished printing the digits. Okay. We have stored the digits there. So we need and because we are working with the one we need to move yeah okay we need to move what's in the two okay, that's where i was so my head was telling me correct what we have in the two into the one so that now we can do a sub when we come here when we loop again we can do a sub of what's in the one so now we have 99 so we are going to have a 2.2 um, power of 10 now, not 100. Okay, actually we need to do something with, with A2 also. But for now, let's imagine that A2 now it's working with powers of 10. So it can, uh, it can work on the value that we have in, that we passed in the one. So that's one thing that we need to do. So here, we move the two into the one, but as I was reasoning, we need the power of 10. What, with, what is the next power? If we were in hundred, we need to move, no? So after hundred comes 10. So what it's simple. What we need to do is add, okay? Because they are, it's an address. So we need to add four to the power of 10 uh, address register, which is a zero. Uh, sorry, a two, not a zero. Yeah. So we moved from here. Okay. We moved to this one. Because 80 was pointing to this, to this address, and now we we made it point to here. Okay. Also, we need to decrement because the digit position now it's not anymore where we were but we need to move one position down. So we need to subtract one and we move this pos into A1. Okay, so we need to subtract one. And that should be wrong. Into A1, right? Yes. And I believe that's it. Now we need to branch. It will never be... It will 
piece of quick. And this one, not A1, but what's in A1, because we are decrementing this value. We could have, instead of having this, okay, we could not, we did not need to do this in a way. We could work directly with the memory, but working with address registers is faster, no? So that's why I did it. Uh, so, because we need to learn also to start optimizing a bit uh even though it's for beginners but um this one okay we did not need to do it okay um sorry we did it okay so that we are faster we are working using address registers but we could not do it okay we could have put a comma there and then here when we subtract okay we subtract directly on the memory which is not really what we, what we want. Now, if it's not equal to zero, if the contents of A1 are not zero, because it had nine as a start, we uh, loop, uh, we loop, why should we loop? Uh, here, I guess, where there is the zero to the three. So, Next digit. I'm using this. And here. Next digit. When we have done the power of 10, what remains is the remainder, no? Whatever value we have is the remainder. It cannot be, and it has to be between 0 and 9. So, what we do, again here, it's, it's a repetition, because now the 2 will hold the, the remainder in this case so we do the same thing as we did here the 30 but this will be the 2 now not the 3 because it's the it's the the 2 always has the let's say the remainder And we need to move it we need to do the same thing back here. Fifty two. We don't need to increment it, it's useless. Because we are exiting and we're not going to look at it anymore. So, now the thing is, we have a, a hex conversion routine, okay? Uh, hi, vision all, for all, thanks for being here. That's complicated. Oh no, it's simple. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it can be complicated if you, d look, you call this complicated. I see Dr. Honey, okay, doing things and they are complicated for me. Because if you don't know whatever language it is, whether it's assembly, whether it's C, whether it's basic, whether it's, I don't know, Java, JavaScript, whatever. If you don't know it, you don't know it. So it's always complicated. It's always difficult. Anyway, at least this is my reasoning to anything that I, uh, when I want to learn something, it's always complicated. So, we have a routine and yeah, yes, you, you do, I, I try to 
let's say, make some logic to it that people can understand me. But yes, you are right. Um, also, I am, all this can go, to be fair. There's an instruction in the CPU that does it. I'm just doing it instead of the CPU. Okay? Um, because it gives us the value and also the remainder. So all you have to do is divide by the power, basically, to be able to convert the uh, number. Or you can use the binary coded decimal, but that is a, another thing. So we have this routine, but the funny thing is, we can we use it right now or not? We cannot, no, because when we when we actually we can we can use it probably on the score. Yes. Let's see. Let's see the routine. Um, that is. Yes, it has. So I'm not using multiplication or division. I'm not using signed or unsigned numbers, and I am not using binary coded uh, decimal. It's not the 6800, but it's the 68000. So it's a 16 bit processor. Um, but because I am basing this game on, on a series of chapters from the book of Fabio Cucci, uh, which still chapter seven, he doesn't mention though. So I am limiting myself uh, into writing a game with what we learned till chapter seven, except for one thing, which is the startup file, which I used because as if it would be very difficult without the startup file using the extension, um, is the only thing that I am borrowing from chapter eight. Uh, the rest is all till chapter seven. In a way, it's a challenge, but. I said that you can write a game till chapter seven and I'm proving it basically. That 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 is all. So if we go to the uh, enemies, yeah. Uh, when when the enemy goes to the top of the screen and it vanishes, okay, that's when we can add something to our score. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So basically, okay, we are checking the y position of the of the we are subtracting, okay? So if it's at the top of the screen, okay? Uh the sprite then and it's going to be on zero then we need to deactivate it. That means we have passed it, so we can increment our score. So all we need to do here is, for now, okay, we can say move uh, dot long, uh, sorry, not move, add, um, shall we say 10, let's say 10, to score. We did name it score, right? Score. Okay. So we are adding 10 to the value score. <clears throat> now, and this we can see. So if we run the game, let's do something. Um, how shall I do it so that you can see what I mean? Um, yeah, let's add score. Okay, and now let's 
run the game in debug mode. And we should see, given that I did this right, we should see, so here we have the value score, and remember we used long, right? So once I start it, of course it went back, yeah, we should see, uh, it's not refreshing. It crashed. I wanted to see the values here, basically, um, changing. So, score is. Um, score is a long word okay so why let's run it again the com the conversion to hex routine we are not uh, I need to make this the visual code smaller okay because as I will not be able to see both so it is there let's see if it will continue without any problems yeah but this is not showing why is that And it closed so that's fine hmm it should show me the content um, but if I go okay what we can do is we can set a breakpoint when we are going to update the score. Yeah, let's do that. So we see the score being updated. So I'm just going to do actually two breakpoints, one here and one here. And I'm going to run it again continue ah the thing is it they started from the middle let's let's uh um, run it again. I'm hoping it will not be the first one will not be in the middle. Okay uh, Again in the middle Okay, let's move okay. I'll tell you what we will do. Let's play it Okay So we should see 10 being, okay, so this is, let's make it bigger when it could, when it will refresh, refresh, and here, it stopped here, it hasn't added the 10 yet, it's going to do it, you see, it, it is down here, okay, it's going to do it, so if we tell it to, um, not step over, step into, step up, no. Well. 
so it should give us 10 there you go you can see the the number it's remember it's a long address this core okay so it's this is these four bytes you can see that we have 10 there okay so now we know that um we can read this value and try to convert it and then the value that we get from our routine we can try to print it to the screen which is a um, different story but right now we know that once it goes up okay once it is here okay we can this core is is actually what we want what we wanted so if we tell it to continue Okay. Again, it went. It stopped there, and now this. If I do the next one, it should become twenty. You see, it's fourteen now. So we have that. So now we need to read that number and try to display it in decimal. Given that our routine works, because. <laughs> I had a piece of paper, but not, not the actual code. Um, I do like to do, um, like the old days, putting it on a piece of paper and then actually doing the code. Um, I still like to do that. So let's remove the breakpoints. So now is, first of all, where do we call um the routine that converts this core and that is in game.s and we need the routine update hud so it goes also in the utils for now I really need to split this in eventually. So and this is enemies. Yes. I haven't looked at the time. How are we doing? Okay. So this is um, so we need so lots of things will happen in the HUD, but for now it will be just doing one thing update HUD. For example, we need to update the score, we need to update the high score, we need to update other things. But let's do... Uh, thanks uh, for the follow for NTSZ. Is SZ Slovakia? <laughs> no, it doesn't stand for Slovakia, I hope. So, range of routine dot s, and we do hi. Thanks for the follow. As I said, um, we are doing an Amiga game uh, in assembly, and uh, this is episode number eleven. <clears throat> um, it's a simple game, and it's. Nah, it's not difficult. Everybody says it's difficult. Any other thing that you don't know is difficult. So, I, I do not uh, reason things like this just because people say it's difficult. I mean, C is difficult for me because I don't know it. 
Java is difficult because I don't know it. I definitely not don't know Java. So, yeah. Anything that you don't know is difficult. Really? Uh, which country are you from? Update score. Ah, you're from Brazil. Okay. Well, it's definitely not CSS3. <laughs> definitely not. So, we need a routine to update this core. And why why Brazilians? Why it cannot be somebody else? You want them to speak to you in Portuguese or the Brazilian language, which is Portuguese in a way, if I'm not mistaken. So. Yeah, Portuguese Brazilian, yeah. Of course. Or oh, Brazilian Portuguese, yeah. Put Brazilian first. <laughs> so the update score now that we have the routine for converting, okay? Should be let's say easy we just need to move score into the zero because that's the parameter it takes then we call our routine which is did we, did we convert hex to this one yeah so we have it converted now and where is it converted? It is converted into, um, first of all, this I need to save. This one I need to save too. Uh, it is converted into here, where we have the decimal string. Just going to copy it. So, um, it's well easy not really we need to get the converted string you now the address of it so we call it decimal string into a1 anyway so we have the address of our decimal string into a one now we need a loop to print the string no at least and we also need so this is source from where we are copying it we need the destination where it's going hmm. which we don't know yet. Um, so uh, let's do an address on the screen. Uh, random, let me check the print routine where it is. Uh, where does it start printing? I'm just going to take that for now. And we don't have a 
we don't have a, a an address of this core where we want to print this core for now so for now i'm just going to use this start address okay for now i'm going just going to use that and this we don't need a three we can use a two no i'm just going to use a dummy address right now as destination because our uh yeah although i'm taking 10 digits i cannot print 10 digits to the screen i'm going to print the last seven digits okay anyway we our score is not going to be a lot more than seven digits and this one is tricky yeah we need to because i'm not taking the full string i need to put that i assume if it's correct It's zero. So we take the address and should be the opposite way around, I think. I want commodity zero. I think it should be a one. to um Yeah, let's skip the first one and do a one a two comma to zero so this addressing mode okay is basically add everything together so a one whatever the address value we have in a one whatever value we have in a in the zero we add that so the zero we start with seven so we add seven and we are also adding the number two in this case yeah it's fine thank you thank you for being here so and then we just look no so just printing the high score i'm realizing there are so many things that can go wrong <laughs> Although I did, as I said, have it on a piece of paper, but so let's see what it's going to do. Um, I do not have faith <laughs> that it is okay. Um, it will crash. No, that's the worst that can happen. Uh, we are calling it we come here if we come here we update the score somewhere on the screen doesn't matter right now uh, we print the numbers the last seven digits yeah because we're taking the offsets and that's it and we turn back and we do this every blank every every um, every frame so let's see 
logic wise in my head is fine but there you go first mistake so update hat how did i write update hat i uh, know i prefer it capital letters so update hat. Oops, uh, I ran it. I ran it in in debug mode. Sorry, I need to exit. Stop. Mm, it's not liking it not even as soon as we went there it crashed so let's do that first So till there is fine. So we know it's it's in our um, update hat, but it could be also in the convert to decimal. So this I'm not sure about that. Eh? That's fine. Let's call it without that. Of course, nothing is going to happen. I mean, we'll see garbage probably on the screen. But let's see if it's the convert to hex. Uh, sorry, convert hex to decimal that is causing the issue. Yeah, it is. So I detected it. Yeah. Um actually I should run it a bit more. So let me run it again and play it a bit to see if when it updates the score all is fine. So, although it should be writing, it nothing is happening. It should we should see garbage somewhere on the screen. Oops, now it's end. Mm. So I'm going to do plus that one. I think I did plus 31 if I remember correctly. So there we even gave it a constant name for this, but let me check if I did that. If I check constants. So there you go, the start row offset is 31. So where I'm doing that in print info of course and print info is in utils so i'm adding that offset to a3 so yeah if i do plus 31 it should be fine so let's run it again I, i'm looking for garbage on the screen basically it's not good but it can it indicates things not to us so 
not know how to play my own game. Not showing. It's not showing. So last part. This is not showing garbage on the screen. But it could be because we have zeros, no? I mean zero, what garbage can it show? It's empty. Actually that makes sense, yeah. What how why did I expect that it cannot so let's debug this or let's try to debug this uh, d2 am I initializing it but every time I'm copying into it I'm not using anywhere else Why is it crashing? Hmm. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Are you passing nine into digit pass? We take a copy of it. When I'm restoring the copy. Uh, hold on. I'm always working with the one. The thing is, you know, sometimes on the stream you don't see it. You, you switch off the stream. Uh, it's in the, it's in here, in the, in the gaming loop. Okay, so it's after collision. It could be before, it doesn't matter. It's, these are the main routines for uh, our game. I mean, this is there just for us to exit if we want, and this is collision detection, which so far we haven't done anything with it. <laughs> yeah, we have problems here, as you can see, it's crashing. Let's debug, yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, I was thinking, um, Dockster, okay, I was thinking that D2, okay, that I need to make a copy of the 0 into D2, but we don't, because I'm overwriting it here. Oh. <laughs> Hi Proton, no it's not a guru, but it's not working properly, I mean, I, in a way I challenged myself in a way, um, because I am limiting from using uh, division of the 68,000 but because of the book 
I'm just I don't know why it you typed guru and it uh, guru and, and it timed you out. That is and it's streamless that typed you out. But <laughs> ah because you typed it all capital letters. Uh -huh. <laughs> but anyway, I read your message. So, let's see, probably I will take it offline, yeah? because it must be something so stupid. It's always like that. I switch off the stream and afterwards, oh, this is the bug. This is where the bug was. And did we do two hours? Yes, we did. So. I do not want to spend time debugging this when I can do it offline. Yeah, let's let's call it. Um, let me take notes. So. From all this, these go into the next one, the next episode. Oops, I didn't copy that. And, and we need to give them a number. In sequence. Actually, let's do two and three. And eleven underscore one debug. Hex. Yeah. So like that, we know what we need to do. Um, I do not have coll. I would like to do collision next week, so I'm going to add it. I mean, collision. We have collision, but we need to the proper way, you know, fully implement it. Because right now it collides and it exits, but we need to lose a life, basically. So. We will continue next week. Um, so I'm just going to update to that. Okay, so we know that the bug is there. And if we run it, we should still be fine. It's, uh, it's in, uh, Good question. It's uh, in uh, in hex. It's in hex, and we are comparing to hex. Uh, hold on, hold on. You just no. It's in decimal. Sorry, sorry. Um, so yeah, but it's correct. Um, that that is that it. it it, it is correct, um, but you, you just made me think of something. So let me find it.
that is decimal. We are storing it in a long word, but is decimal. I'm not using the dollar symbol in, any, in front of them. So when we compare, we compare against the decim the hex value, okay? Because although I, I am, okay, let me reframe. I wrote it in decimal, but it's stored in memory as hex, <laughs> okay? And I'm comparing hex with hex. <laughs> Just um, because I, I got confused myself now. <laughs> Does does that answer your question, Silverat? Okay, so okay. So, I think uh, let's let's call it a a day, and and I will I will take it offline and debug it offline, um, because anyway it's 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 been to, I mean after two hours of uh, uh, after 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 two hours of for new I mean for me it's fine probably but um, for you guys listening to me and trying to figure it out it can be tiring um so yeah let's take it take it off for ne next episode i'm pretty sure i will have the answer to it um and we continue uh, with the game next uh, next friday anyway thank you very much um for those that are following the book see you tomorrow and uh at Thanks, KH Jen. Uh, I didn't notice. Um, and uh, we'll continue tomorrow with the book, and after that, Friday again with the game. So tomorrow is Italian, Saturday, uh, Sunday is uh, English. See you guys. Have a good week or have a good weekend, and see you next Friday for those that are not there tomorrow. Bye bye.